Hey YouTube, Shukun Shinobi here with a review of the SH Figure Arts Lunatic from Tiger and Bunny, a villain-ish figure, maybe? It was really hard to kind of pinpoint him. He was more or less a kind of vigilante of sorts, but anyway. Um, pretty much box style, similar to the other Tiger and Bunny characters. The figure, the anime character, Lunatic, Katakana, Cool Red Moon. Uh, all the stuff back here, hear the voice of Thanatos. Yeah, mantle, effect parts. Libra. No, I'm kidding. Uh, Yuri Petrov was the character. He was like a lawyer, or attorney, or some government-ish thing. Uh, I don't remember. So, yeah. Uh, he was a pretty cool character. He was voiced by Urataros' voice actor, which was pretty neat. But, uh, anyway, enough of that, and on with him. Uh, this is the base figure right here. Um, sans the, uh, the holster pieces... This is how he comes packaged. Um, pretty nice figure overall, I think. Um, really interesting figure. His eyes are stuck in this wide-eyed, creepy position. Um, kind of makes you wonder how he gets his hair in a mask like this, but that's fine. Um, Articulation-wise, uh, you've got full rotation here, hindered by nothing. Uh, neck articulation hindered by nothing. Waist swivel, a little bit of an ab crunch, but not that much. Double joint at the elbows, swivels. And the typical ball and socket hip joints with a small thigh swivel, double joint at the knee. And then you got the typical figyarts ankle articulation down here. That is a die cast foot, which is nice. Um, and there is toe action still, it's just small and covered up by his big bell bottoms. So, <clears throat> gotta. Keep that in mind. Um, the holster holds his crossbow. Just kind of slides right out. And uh, slides right in. Then he's got these two holsters back here for something. Not entirely sure what. But um, he's got those too. Yay. Uh, the, the blue used in this figure looks strange. It's got a really high gloss to it. So it kind of looks like it was made out of like cheaper paint, but uh, it still looks nice, uh, especially against the black matte of the uh, uh, other side of the the figure. So um, that combination looks pretty neat. Uh, something I kind of wish they would have used in the double figure arts in terms of alternating between like a gloss and a matte. Uh, would have looked really nice. But I do love the figure. Um, probably my favorite Tiger and Bunny figure. Not sure why, because I wasn't a huge fan of the character, but he has fire hands, so I guess that's cool. So, um, <clears throat> go ahead and turn this on. You can just spin around like that. Accessory-wise, we got a whole bunch of stuff, and it's pretty neat. Um, we have, uh, technically a lot of hands, but you've got the crossbow holding hands. A pointy hand. And this crazy, like... My index finger is broken hands. I mean, look at that index finger. That's not how a finger bends. It's crazy. Nuts. So anyway, you have that. Um, you've got these smaller fireballs, which are actually hands. They're effect parts, but they're hand effect parts. Uh, so these are like kind of grippy, fiery death hands. I like the alternates between color. This one's a lot more blue, and this one's a lot more green. So that looks pretty nice. And you've got even larger fireball hands. Uh, these ones are look to be for more of a kind of punch-ish thing. Uh, or something along the lines of that. Though the hand is right here, so it's kind of a straight like this. So it's more like a wispiness effect. So it kind of looks something like this if you were to line them up together. So that's kind of nice. You have those four effect pieces. You have uh, an alternate head. That includes a fiery eyeball thing. Yeah, really creepy, but I mean, look at that. That's creepy too, so he's just a creepy person in general. And a crossbow with the fire effect on it, because he shoots the little fire arrows. It's got a bayonet on the front, that's fun. You can stab people with it too. On top of that, you have the typical Tomashi stage for the Tiger and Bunny figures. Lunatic Yuri Petrov with the scales because he's all judgment and stuff. He's like a Deca Ranger. But, um, 
So you got that, that's fun. And then you've got his cape, as you can see right here. The cape was an iconic thing of Lunatic because capes are cool. Uh, you've got one solid back piece. This is hard plastic, kind of like the Zodiart's cloaks, except this one's better. Um, so you've got the back piece and you've got two front pieces. You have a front piece that's flat, and then a front piece that has this molded outwards, so you can get some arm articulation in there. So let's go ahead and uh, show those off. So you put the back piece on. Kind of wedge him in there. It is a very tight fit in the upper area. Actually, do it from the front first. I had an easier time doing that. Because he has to fit his arms underneath, like this peg right here, and this section for his hand. Uh, so you needed to kind of wedge him in place there, and then place the back piece over it. It's just a lot easier to do it that way. So line everything up, which is apparently not easy for me. Come on, Yuri, work with me. Doo -doo. There we go, just like that. So he has this, and unlike the Zodiart's cloaks, he actually still has quite a bit of articulation, um, particularly in the legs. They're still completely free-moving which is nice. So he can still stand absolutely no problem. Granted, this looks pretty neat. Um, I love his cloak. His cloak is like majestic. It's like some crazy like rave party cloak. But um, it's, I mean, it's plain looking. You just can't get anything cool going with a cloak like this. So we'll go ahead and remove these pieces. Just be careful when you're removing the pieces like that, because you don't want any of the pegs to break, like on my Zodiart's cloak. Place them in the one with articulation, or articulation allotted, rather. It's not really with articulation, the cloak doesn't move. Line everything up, and make sure you don't fall out of the cloak. And there we go. So this hand is still pretty much dead because it's behind the thick part of the cloak. However, as you can see, you have uh, room for hand movement, or rather arm movement, uh, in this area of the cloak. So you can pose him with this cloak, with a crossbow, with a fiery hand, with one of his rage hands. Um, whatever you want to do, you have this hand open. Which uh, I think is pretty nice overall, so you've got uh, that going for it as well. So, uh, lots of accessories, a lot of posing options, and an all-around pretty cool figure. See, so you can point the crossbow while in his cloak. Uh, to switch the heads out, it's really easy. You just pull off this head and put this one on. Um, might involve some tries, because that happens a lot. The joint just kind of falls down. Um, in fact, that will probably happen multiple times. So you can get something cool like that, like you're shooting fire and you're seeing fire and all sorts of fire. Um, head's giving me a lot of problems, but uh, very, very cool figure. If you're a fan of Tiger and Bunny or a fan of Lunatic, this is obviously a must-own figure. Um, and it's honestly my favorite uh, Tiger and Bunny figure art yet, um, particularly because of all of these really awesome effect parts. I'm not a huge fan of effect parts normally, but... Uh, these ones with like the fists and the fiery fists and stuff, I can absolutely make exceptions for because I really do think that they're really cool. The cape's a pretty cool addition as well. It's worth noting that the uh, effect piece hands actually are hands underneath there. They're not glued together or anything like that. I thought that was really interesting when I was trying to get that hand on. <laughs> and like I said, the effect parts just look absolutely awesome on this figure. And you can even repurpose these as fireball effects for other figures too. You can barely see the blue hand in there, so it really wouldn't be too big of a problem to pop, pop this on a figure art of some sort, a, a Zodiart or a Greed or something, I don't know. 
Um, but all sorts of figure arts all use the same hand joint, so you can multi-purpose these as well. But it just looks absolutely, absolutely sick. I really, really love it. I mean, honestly, how does that not look awesome? Um, like I said, my favorite of the bunch so far, um, I think the next retail release is the Wild Tiger Movie Edition, which kind of stinks. Um, so we still need Dragon Kid and Blue Rose and Fire Emblem. And I think that's all of them left, I believe. So hopefully we'll still see them. I'm surprised we saw Lunatic before we've seen the main heroes, but... Um, whatever Tomashi does, Tomashi does. Uh, absolutely fantastic figure. If you liked the character, then by all means pick this up. If you're just a fan of Tiger and Bunny and you didn't really like Lunatic, I still recommend this figure because I honestly do feel like it's the best Tiger and Bunny figure to be released so far. Uh, effect parts are awesome. The cloak is awesome. I love the fact that they included a cloak to where you could actually still use some of the articulation of the figure. Um, that's nice. You get the Tomashi stage. Uh, you have the alternate heads. Um, just so much going for this figure that makes it an absolutely fantastic retail release, which uh, surprised me a little bit as well. So that was really cool, too. So, by all means, pick this up. Favorite so far. I see very little to no flaws in this figure. Um, uh, more of a cloth cape or rubber cape probably would have been nice, but uh, I don't mind the plastic one, given the fact that they do give you one to use the arm articulation. So you can check out ShukanShoby.com for updates on my reviews and hauls, and of course check out RiderJourneysRambles.com for the latest token news in the craziest way possible. So take care, have a great one.